All right, let's talk about MIDI and Pro Tools and what you can do when you're not getting sound. Okay, so first of all, I'm making this video because it is something that tends to pop up fairly frequently for me in Pro Tools. And unfortunately, this is something that tends to pop up in Pro Tools. And that's the idea that either randomly while you're working on a session or when you first open a session, you might suddenly have one of your instrument tracks or something that has MIDI on it uh, not not be making any sound. Is that the right way to say that? Yeah. So with that said, we're going to look at a few of the things that I tend to do to troubleshoot when I'm not getting any sound out of my MIDI. All right. And if you have a close eye for detail, then you might have noticed that this track has been changing slightly, especially since my intro that I just did. So that's because I have been prepping this track just to show you this one thing specifically. And that's the idea that this track is now grayed out and it's not making any sound. So if I solo it and I try to hit play here, I'm not getting any sound. I'm just getting some of the reverb artifacts that are coming through because they're on pre-fader mode. So I'm not getting any of my actual MIDI sound out of this piano track. And this is something I've actually covered in a previous video in a lot more detail. So I will put a card up on the screen for that video, but I'm just gonna show you the quick way to fix this. So you'll notice how this is like grayed out. It's darker than this track, for example. These are both instrument tracks, both this bass and this piano are instrument tracks. And so they shouldn't look that different, right? There's something wrong with this piano track and that's the reason why this is not making any sound. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this drop down menu here and click on it and I'm gonna choose instrument. And so this is where we can see our details with our MIDI instruments. And so if I solo this track and hit play here, you can see there's nothing going on this meter and there's nothing going on this meter. And so when it's grayed out, let that die down. And so when it's grayed out, what I've discovered is you can just go click where it says none and basically it's gotten disconnected from the plugin, right? So you just go and find the, the track that you're on. So I'm on the piano track and then you find the plugin that you have. So what do I have? I have labs open, that's what I'm running here. So I go to piano and I go to labs and then I click channel one and now I should get sound out of this. So that's one thing you can do if things aren't behaving properly, whether it's grayed out or not, you can go to this instrument view here and you can click on this output panel and make sure it's actually matching the plugin that you have on the track. And then hopefully that fixes your problem, but it doesn't always. So let's talk about more things here. Okay, so I'm just gonna mute this track really quickly so I can kind of talk over it a little bit while I hit play. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at this meter here and then this meter here. So when I hit play, you'll notice I'm getting some signal here, but I'm not getting it here. And that pops up sometimes. It's not only when you mute and solo things at the same time, which is kind of ridiculous, right? But I just did that so I wouldn't hear everything else in the session. I would just hear that reverb. Um, so sometimes what pops up is you have the signal coming in here, which means you know, you're getting that MIDI signal coming through, but you're, it's not making sound for some reason. So it's not assigning the MIDI data, which is just performance data, to the actual sound, right? Which is based on what plugin you have on there. So a lot of this stuff might seem pretty obvious, but it is part of the troubleshooting process. I promise this is, this is important to check. Um, so one thing that might be happening is you might have your volume fader all the way down on that track, right? So if I unmute this and now I hit play, same thing, right? But it's because my fader is all the way down. So if I go and look, it's all the way down there. So in this instance, I can just do Command Z because I just manually dragged the volume down and now my volume is not so uh, low. So now I should get signal if I hit play. Cool. Another good thing to check, for example, if you're trying to record MIDI and you have your track record enabled and you have a MIDI keyboard, is to check that your MIDI keyboard is actually plugged in. So mine's plugged in, it's working. But if yours is not working for some reason, it might be because it's actually not plugged in yet, right? So one thing you can do is on some keyboards like mine, um, there's a little display that actually lights up when it's plugged in and it's getting power and stuff. So that's a good thing to check too. Now, another good thing to check if you're trying to record and your MIDI is not making sound, so your instrument track is not making generating any sound out of your MIDI data, is that whatever plugin you've assigned, whatever instrument plugin that you've assigned to your track, actually is uh, covers the range of what you're trying to create. So I'll show you an example of that. I'm going to duplicate this track just so 
I can mess with it and it doesn't mess with my actual session here. So I'm going to undo this one and I'm going to work with this duplicate here. So um, with this plugin, for example, it doesn't display it as well. So this is kind of why I wanted to duplicate this track. But if I switch my plugin, for example, to this instrument here. So what you'll notice here is right now, just this little tiny section of my keyboard is grayed out. But if I switch the instrument I'm on, so for example, I think maybe in um, short, let's find, I'll find one really quickly here. Here's one. So now even more of my keyboard is grayed out and this range of what this instrument can actually create in terms of notes is much narrower. So if I try to hit a MIDI note that's down here on my keyboard, it's not going to create any sound. Whereas if I hit a note that's up here on my keyboard, it will make sound. So let me try to demonstrate that really quickly. So you see that note, it's getting hit as I hit the keyboard. If I then go up here, it makes sound, right? I go back out of range doesn't make sound. So that's a good thing to check is the actual range of the MIDI instrument that you're working with. Are you outside of that range? Another good thing to check, and this one got me the other day during a session, um, is if your keyboard has an octave transpose button, I can speak like mine, you want to make sure that you didn't hit that and bring yourself out of that instrument's range. Even though you're hitting the notes that should normally be within the range, you're now an octave away. So you might be outside of that instrument's range. I hope that makes sense. So checking that octave transpose button on your keyboard can also help. Okay, and then other things you can do to troubleshoot. Sometimes things are just a little wonky and I'm not really sure why. It could just be a bug. Um, it kind of depends on your system, I'm sure. Um, but some things you can do is you can just try restarting Pro Tools if you're really sure that like you've gone through all these options and you're not sure what, what else could be wrong with it. You know, you've checked that your volume isn't down. You've checked all the basics, all the obvious stuff, right? You can restart Pro Tools. You can also try duplicating another track that has a working MIDI system going and then tweak from there to kind of figure out where the um, the weak point is in whatever you're doing, right? Um, sometimes things will then work or sometimes then you'll realize what you'll be able to narrow it down more to what's causing the issue. So yeah, restarting Pro Tools, duplicating a track and tweaking it from there, or you can take off the plugin and start a new instance of the plugin and see if that helps. And all these things, if they don't fix the issue directly, can help you get a better idea of where that weak point in the chain is. So they can help you troubleshoot and get to the point where you do understand what the problem is. Another thing you can do is you can go to Setup, MIDI, and then look at MIDI input devices and make sure that your, um, your MIDI keyboard or whatever device you're using is being recognized by Pro Tools. So that's another thing you can do. And with this, you can make sure that it's being recognized and it's checked off, it's active, right? And if it's not, then you know that you need to go into something with your system settings and actually get the computer to acknowledge the existence of that device. So that's another thing you can do. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you today, I guess this isn't really related to this necessarily, but it's the idea that we have a MIDI Zoom, right? So with Audio Zoom, we can do like RNT to Zoom. We can do um, command brackets to zoom. We have a whole bunch of different zooms. I have videos on this, so I'm not going to dig into it a ton. But we also have a MIDI zoom. So if I go into the notes view here, this is where we can actually see it. Um, if you go up here to this little button here, this is our MIDI zoom. So this one here is the audio zoom. We also have the MIDI zoom. So if you're having trouble like seeing your notes or working with your notes, you might just have to change this. So as I hit the down button, see how it gets nice and thin down here? It gets super, super thin on the track that I have um, in notes view here. And if I go this way, it makes them much bigger easier to work with potentially. So the, I just wanted to show you that, make sure that you knew that's out there. And I think that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about today. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, like, comment, subscribe. I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Noise. My patrons get access to additional content. We have a Discord server we're hanging out on. We're running a book club. It's a lot of fun. I do early release videos on there as well. And, um, you know, check that out if you feel so inclined. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay.